woolly mammoths, an elephant species of the size of the African elephant, roamed the northern hemisphere for about 250,000 years. Their extinction have inspired researchers to create the most fantastic stories and ideas. To understand this mystery, we have studied a wide variety of articles and papers. The most popular theory at the moment is that of the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis. Without going too deeply into this popular theory, we can prove with ease that this so-called comet impact event was not responsible for anything significant. That is because the temperature dip that is often shown, when presenting this theory, is shown on a too short time frame. You must step back to a larger scale to see the bigger picture. Because when we look at a time frame of 100,000 years, we see multiple dips of the same size. And because large comet impacts are extremely rare, it is easy to understand why the YD theory is 100% false. Comets have always been popular for all sorts of reasons. They are used to explain the extinction of dinosaurs, the disappearance of ancient civilizations, and also to the extinction of the woolly mammoth. It's probably because most people are fascinated by boom events. Boom events are simple, because they are a point in time, and so it is easy to understand what was before and what was after. Most complicated processes, however, do not work this way. Our theory of Earth crust deformation show that they took place over tens of thousands of years, and slowly disrupt everything that lives on our planet. During an Earth crust deformation event it is possible that a comet impacts the Earth or that massive solar flares bombard our planet. This mix of events can very much complicate the analyses of what exactly happened. Scientists, as well as most people, are in general fund of monodisciplinary ideas. No other disciplines have to be involved. Not too much thinking, or further research is needed. The solution is there to grasp. One small research area that solves large-scale problems, seems to be very popular. That is why science, with their pillarization, seems not very capable to solve the bigger questions of life. And that is also why debunking is so popular, because a theory that is about to be debunked covered only an event partially, and so it can always be debunked. Mathematics, as the queen of science, covers the whole field, and does not exclude any of the materialistic events in advance. That is why a mathematical-based theory stands the test of time. The basis of our theory is mathematical, and we always think in patterns when we extend our theory. A short introduction to our method. We have discovered that Earth crust deformations were real. The geographic North Pole has moved quite significantly, while the geographic South Pole remained at a fairly steady position. The mechanism that caused this migration of the geographic North Pole is most probably expansion of our planet. We are still researching all the patterns to be sure about our claims, and how old the expansions actually are. If you listen to expansionists like Neil Adams or James Maxlow you will learn that they proclaim that the expanding Earth stretches over a time frame of about 120 million years. They have used paleomagnetic data for this. But we say without hesitation that paleomagnetic data cannot be used, because this data is merged based on a constant radius, so it cannot be used for another purpose such as an expanding planet. We have found clues that the expanding Earth is much younger than anyone had ever thought it could be possible. What drives this expansion? We will cover this in another patron special. Back to the mysterious flash frozen woolly mammoth of Siberia. By the way, there were even larger mammoth species than the woolly mammoth, for example one that is called Paleoloxodon nematicus. This species was almost twice the height of the woolly mammoth. Its weight was an incredible 24 tons, about four times heavier than the today's African bush elephant, which is the heaviest living land animal today. Not to speak of the even more massive Argentinosaurus, weighing almost 100 tons in nowadays gravity, or the Tyrannosaurus rex, or the flying dinosaur, the Pterosaurus, the size of a school bus. Why did all the massive land animals became extinct? The most simple answer is as simple as incredible, gravity has increased, because the Earth has grown. The largest animals of the past, that capture our imagination, could not support their own weight due to the growing mass of the Earth, and so became extinct. Many of the other smaller animals simply evolved into better adapted species to the slowly changing environment. And these growing cycles are much more recently than anyone ever held possible. Of course is it possible that during one of these growing cycles a meteorite hit the Earth? 
And we all know that these sudden events get the most attention, while they have the least impact on the long term. Over the last few centuries it became clear that millions of mammoths were caught by a massive cold wave. This inspired Charles Hapgood, who took the idea of Earth crust shifts to new level, to believe that sudden shifts, within a matter of days, could be possible. Hapgood was on a very interesting track regarding crustal deformations, that we again took to another level, but Hapgood's take on the very sudden shifts was wrong. This idea also, can be brought back to boom events. Short events that people can easily understand, but are not necessarily true. It is clear that the mammoths were caught in a massive cold wave. How do we match this with our very slow earth crust deformations? If the crust was moving over tens of thousands of years, the animal could easily migrate, isn't it? Yes, that is indeed the case. So, what exactly happened? What have we discovered in our research that might solve this immense mystery? To get you finger behind deep mysteries you need to turn everything upside down and look carefully how science uses dating methods. How does carbon-14 dating work? Are the corpses of the woolly mammoths correctly dated? Is it possible that their sudden death could be related to an incorrect dating, i.e., that the event that caused their death also disturbs a correct carbon-14 dating? That could be possible and it would be a game-changer. I will explain a little bit more about how carbon dating works. It is generally said that carbon-14 dating has a limit of about 60,000 years into the past. Is that so? That depends how you look at it. This dating limit depends of the detection limit of carbon-14 atoms of the mass spectrometer equipment. Because the half-life of carbon-14 is such, that if one believes that the carbon-14 levels always have been the same, then indeed, there would be so little carbon-14 atoms left, that the equipment is unable to pick up any signals. Scientists imagine nice equal levels of carbon-14, and so a nice smooth logarithmic curve that was virtually undisturbed over the last 60,000 years. But if the carbon-14 levels during a certain period were very high, caused for example by nova outbursts, or large corona mass ejections from the sun, this would change everything, without scientists being aware that this event ever took place during the lifetime of the species they're examining. If this event is of such a nature that it not only spikes the carbon-14 levels, but also kills many of the living organisms on Earth, these organisms are inevitably incorrectly dated. This is a serious weak point of the carbon-14 method, that can only be addressed when tree ring calibration is possible. Tree ring calibration for the northern hemisphere is as of now only possible some 12,000 years back in time. Everything older is in fact out of range, because the carbon-14 levels are unverified. Carbon-14 datings that suggest an age beyond 12,000 years must not be taken very seriously, because these dates cannot be verified. These are extrapolations, and so assumptions that have not much truth value. That is why carbon dating is unreliable beyond 12,000 years. Now take a look at the following chain of events that actually took place in the past. Massive corona mass ejections striking the Earth caused flash heating of the upper atmosphere, followed by a dramatic sudden cooling event of the lower atmosphere. Many different studies describe how this mechanism works. CME shock waves are at the root of creating nitric oxide, which cause the lower atmosphere to shed energy and to cool down very rapidly. So, the atmosphere cools down very fast after a bombardment of a corona mass ejection. On top of that, these CMEs cause a huge spike production of carbon-14, which is then absorbed by all living organisms at that same moment, and die shortly thereafter. Because of the enormous peak of carbon-14 at the same time, the following scenario unfolds. The carbon-14 levels were many times higher than usual, which was absorbed by the animals that were flash-frozen. The flash-frozen animals contained many times more carbon-14 than usual during the time of their death. The situation that we now have discovered is this. The half-life of carbon-14, about 5,730 years, is unchanged, and the detection limit of the mass spectrometer is also unchanged. The only parameter that changed, without being correctly observed by mainstream science were the original carbon-14 levels during the flash-freezing event, ultimately caused by a CME that boosted the carbon-14 manifold. The question that we asked is this. 
Can an organism be correctly carbon dated when it dies during very high, unverified carbon levels? The answer is, no. A massive corona mass ejection pointed to the Earth, for example, 50,000 years ago, produces many times more neutrons, and so carbon-14, in one day as normally is produced in one year. And so, the following is what happened. Organisms absorb the high level of carbon-14 just before they die. The carbon-14 half-life curve that is based on constant levels does not look like this, but like this. The curve is many times amplified, and because the detection limit of the mass spectrometers remains unchanged, the researchers who examine the sample believe they are accurately dating the samples with their calibration curve, while in fact they have dated the sample many times too young. When this same event causes also mass extinctions, science with their carbon dating will place this extinction event in a wrong time frame, much earlier than the event actually took place. We cannot date this event as well, but we can say with a high degree of certainty that the mass extinction of the woolly mammoths took place during the latest crustal deformation cycle, between 26,000 and 130,000 years ago. Siberia shifted to a much higher latitude and became permanently cold and so kept the corpses intact in the permafrost. Carbon dating is simply very unreliable and is only okay to be used when the curve is calibrated with tree rings from the same area. That means that carbon-14 has a theoretical window of about 12,000 years into the past. Finally, one last thing. We have seen massive animals shrink over time. From dinosaurs the size of an apartment building, to very large mammoth species, to immense creatures like elasmotherium and dinotherium, to increasingly smaller species when time goes by. The pattern is so evident that there's no chance to deny the significance of this. We have become much more certain that the deformation cycles that caused the geographic North Pole to migrate and wiped away ancient civilizations were caused by cyclical expansion cycles of Mother Earth. Other evident patterns also indicate that these expansion cycles are much more recent than previously thought. We have found more clues that the age of the dinosaurs was not millions of years ago, but just about 500,000 years ago. Early man seemed to have walked with dinosaurs. Gravity grew with the growing Earth. Large animals could not support their own weight anymore and so slowly became extinct or evolved into smaller versions. This very slow process of extinction is mixed with sudden catastrophic events such as the flash frozen mammoths, caused by large CME outbursts. Comet impacts are also part of this complicated mix of events. We think that higher activity of the sun that is pointed to the earth causes these growth cycles. Large CME deliver the necessary energy to build new mass on Earth's anode, the South Pole. Especially when eccentricity of Earth's orbit around the Sun is high, the Earth comes much closer to the Sun, and so exposure to large CME outbursts becomes much more likely. This new discovery is just a tip of the iceberg. We will publish more on this topic in the future. Thank you for watching.